When President Jackson came into office, it heralded a new day in American democracy. It was the age of the common man, when democracy opened up its doors to the poor and average man, and power shifted away from the elites. However, while white men gained new opportunities, for others it was a much different and darker story. And that is the tale that we're here to explore. I'm Dan Luer and this is History for Little Humans. Before we get going, I just want to remind teachers and homeschool parents that there are lesson plans and resources that go with this episode on my website, historyforhumans.com. Now, our exploration question for today's episode is, in what ways did Jacksonian democracy both increase democracy in America, but also hold down others? And with that as our focus, shovels out, because we got some history to dig. Before Andrew Jackson was president, he was already a national hero and a controversial figure. Born into poverty to a Scots-Irish family, at just 13 years old, he volunteered to fight in the American Revolution. And in that war, he lost his mom and both his brothers and was orphaned at the age of 14. Then, in the War of 1812, he became a celebrated hero for his stand at the Battle of New Orleans. And at the time, American democracy was not so, well, democratic. Now, it was still radically democratic compared to like every other nation, but still, it limited participation in government to the better sorts the wealthier, propertied, and educated citizens. And most founding fathers believed that the common man couldn't really be trusted with suffrage, which is the right to vote. However, after the election of 1824, states began removing property qualifications to vote. You know what that means. There's a party in the voting booth and everyone's invited. Must be white and male to enter though. Now with suffrage extended to the common man, the choice in the 1828 election was clear to them. It was John Quincy Adams of the National Republican Party against Old Hickory, Andrew Jackson of the Democratic Party. One campaign slogan was, vote for Jackson who can fight, not Adams who can write. Though Adams supporters argued it was a good thing to have a president who was intelligent, Jackson won overwhelmingly. When he stepped into the presidency, it was the dawn of a new day in American democracy, and it scared the bejesus out of some. Nothing shows the dramatic turning of the tide that was Jackson's presidency than his inaugural brawl. After his inauguration, a crowd of his supporters stormed into the White House. Roughnecks and ruffians paraded their muddy boots over the carpet, devoured the food, and got drunk on punch and wine. One witness called it an uninterrupted stream of mud and filth. They tore up the curtains, broke fine china, and trampled the furniture. Jackson escaped out the window, and only when the alcohol was brought outside on the lawn did his supporters leave. This inaugural brawl seemed to be a celebration of everything that Jackson's critics feared. The mob was in, and they had their king, Andrew I. His presidency ushered in a time period known as Jacksonian democracy. This refers to the reforms that allowed for greater participation of the common man in government. Politicians now had to campaign to earn their vote and support policies that the people demanded. You know those wigs and tights a lot of the founding fathers wore? Well, that's not a good look anymore. In fact, politicians began to try to show off how poor and rough and simple they were. Politics was changing in this era of the common man. However, it was really the era of the common white man. Many historians see Jacksonian democracy as a contradiction because as white men were having more doors open to them, 
Others had doors slammed on them or shackles tightened upon them. Jackson's policies helped to spread slavery, while women were shunned as they began to demand the right to vote. And Jackson's policies also led to the brutal forced removal of several Indian nations from their homes to hand their lands over to white Americans. And all the while, Jackson's actions were totally transforming the presidency. President Jackson hoped to use his power to fight against the elites who he thought were corrupting the country and keeping down the farmers and laborers. He fired nearly a thousand government employees and replaced them with supporters and those who were loyal to the Democratic Party. He thought government employees became corrupt if they held their positions too long. However, just replacing them with supporters who were often incompetent was also corrupt. They called this the spoils system and it lasted long after Jackson. Jackson was most famous for his war against the Second Bank of the United States. <laughs> Though it was created to help the economy, Jackson thought it was just a tool for the rich and powerful to gain power while holding down the poor. When a bill passed through Congress rechartering the bank, Jackson said, The bank is trying to kill me, but I will kill it. And he did. First, he vetoed the bill, rechartering the bank, and then he deprived it of funds. The bank, ironically, went bankrupt. And that brings us to our quiz flash from the past. What bill is Andrew Jackson on? The 5, the 10, the 20, or the 50? Let's see what we got here. Who's got 20 big ones? And isn't it ironic that Jackson's face appears on the 20 when he hated the Federal Bank and he also detested paper money in general? Get it? General because he's the general? But maybe it was a way of the bank getting back at him for killing the bank with his veto. In fact, President Jackson loved the veto. He vetoed more bills than all previous presidents combined. And this greatly increased the power of the presidency. And with his other policies that included totally ignoring Supreme Court rulings, Jackson's opponents believed he acted like a king, stomping on the Constitution, abusing the veto, and ruling over his angry mob. Despite the criticisms of his opponents, Jackson really transformed what it meant to be president. It became much more like the commander of the whole federal government and not just another branch. And it changed how nearly all other presidents behaved after him, leaving a legacy far beyond his years. All in all, Jackson left a mixed legacy. To some, he was a tyrannical king who abused his power, while others saw him as a hero defending the little guy. Jacksonian democracy only partially extended democracy, while denying it to others and leaving much work for the young nation to still accomplish in order to fulfill its founding ideals. Because remember that history is the light that guides us forward. So thanks for learning some today. This has been History for Little Humans.